This is Retirement Roadmap Radio with Mark Fricks of Master Plan Retirement Consultants. Listen in as we address your retirement concerns and provide insight to help put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, Retirement Roadmap Radio. Hey folks, welcome back to Retirement Roadmap with Master Plan Retirement Consultants. My name is Evan. With me as always, Retirement Planner Mark Fricks. Last episode, we presented the clueless retiree. Now we listed off mistakes, uh, gotchas, uh, just simple unknowns. That One can... of my favorite shows. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, actually it is really fun because we get a lot of these uh, questions uh, constantly and a lot of them repeat from clients or prospects. Um, and we find out there's just so, such a little education. Um, Total there's... misconceptions, misunderstandings. Um... A lot of water cooler advice. A lot of, we call it Google now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And really just things that can not only negatively affect your retirement, but possibly derail. And so we're just going through some of these topics, talking through them, explaining what we hear, what people think, what the truth is. And the problem with a lot of these too is they're not all static. Sometimes they change. Tax laws, for instance. And that, that's the big problem. Even if you think you've got it figured out, it's going to change. I promise you it's going to change. As we've said before, tax laws, all laws are written in pencil. And, and so whether it be Secure Act 1, Secure Act 2, dating all the way back to when our federal tax system came into being and our total government came into being, always something different, whether it be related to Social Security, whether it be changes in um, you know, a capital gains tax rate or the RMD age of so many different things are just constantly rolling over. And, you know, half our battle, Evan, as you know, is keeping up with this stuff. I yeah, mean, oh yeah. we do a lot of education, a lot of not just continuing ed, but just staying up on things that are changing, but also the, the world itself and you know, the economics of the world. So it's just, thankfully, I love to read mm -hmm. and I love to keep up with this stuff, but still my mind's like uh, filling up fast. Well, it's true. We're <laughs> constantly learning, not only because every single client presents new situations, um, but again, things change, new things are coming up. So it keeps things interesting, that's for sure. Well, and even when you do a plan, uh, things will change during their lifetime of retirement as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we just set it in stone and push them off the dock and say, yeah. you know, see you across the river. It, it's always changing the currents of the river, yeah. constantly changing, storms come along. I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but I thought <laughs> it was kind of good. But, but absolutely, that's why it is a, a plan that is very flexible for a lot of reasons. Absolutely. So let's jump into this first uh, topic here. Now we did talk about not planning for taxes in the last episode. Um, so this is a little bit to do that, but I would like to um, posit the not strategizing for Roth conversions. Yeah, so that, that is very much ingrained with tax strategies, as you know, and, and so we are huge proponents of Roths. Uh, those that are listening, very simple, quick explanation. Traditional IRAs, traditional 401ks, you get a benefit when you put money in. You get mm -hmm. a tax deduction, and it, it's not taxed during the growth. But what happens when it comes out in retirement on a fixed income is fully taxable. So we're big fans of the Roth because you don't get a tax deduction going in during your working years when taxes may or may not be high. But in retirement, it comes out tax-free. It goes to your kids tax-free. It grows tax-free. Absolutely. So... Uh, all these years, the traditional 401k and 403b and thrift savings plan, uh, that's where everybody has saved their retirement money. But it's always been traditional. Just recently have they introduced a Roth option. So these accounts we get, they're 95% traditional. And you're talking about two, three, four hundred, five hundred thousand, a million dollars that's going to be taxed for the rest of their lives as they use it and their kids' lives as well. And so we are big proponents. Thankfully, the law allows us to convert from an IRA mm -hmm. into a Roth, you pay the taxes, but you're paying them now as opposed to the unknown tax rate in the future when, again, you're on a fixed tax rate. Right. And strategizing the actual conversion process itself is really important that you pay close attention uh, because everything you convert counts as income for that year it's converted. Counts as taxable income. And also, if you're on Medicare Part B, it could increase your Medicare Part B premiums mm -hmm. as well because that's... That, that takes into account all income. So it's not just, hey, I don't, I don't mind going to this next bracket. We also have to think about the other implications. Mm -hmm. And so we are, you're right, we're very strategic about that. We have some software that helps us, but a lot of it's just experience and, and, and putting pen to paper and figuring yeah. that out. And yeah. also seeing, by the way, I've also seeing where the client's head is at. 
How much are, are they willing to bite off now? We've got some cl uh, clients super aggressive. They're converting fifty, a hundred thousand a year, maybe more, and they know, hey, you know, I, I've got a, I got a check to write this year, but I don't, I don't have any taxes or very few taxes in retirement, and that can feel pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Another option, another consideration as well. If you have a larger IRA and you're just chomping at the bit to convert. Um, converting that entire thing could throw you into the highest tax bracket, which we state have, and federal, which we've seen before. So you're looking at yeah. uh, a third of that account possibly going I'm straight to the government. I'm thinking 45 to 47 percent, most likely. Yeah, that is not the best strategy for longevity of your money. So there's a lot of considerations. Yes. The one I, you're talking about was actually not a client. He was not. Um, uh, he was talking to us, and just he just called us one morning and said, "I just couldn't sleep. Converted a million dollars from my to a Roth, and after I picked myself off the floor, we, you know. But he's done with it. But he put himself in the highest tax bracket, federally and state. So he half half that IRA went to the government. I'm I'm willing to bet that was the largest check that he had ever written. Uh, it's the largest check I've seen converted for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So enough about that one. Um, <laughs> So here's another great one. Not knowing the max contribution for qualified accounts, um, potentially missing out on that ceiling because especially lately, um, IRA and Roth contributions have increased to the allowable limit per year. And yeah, they typically increase. For a while, it was like once every three to five to seven years, but they've gotten more aggressive mm -hmm. with that. Uh, and also the one you have at work, right? It right. went up again this year. There's another, I think, 500 to 1,000 you can put into it this year, whether it be a thrift savings plan, 401k or whatever, so the amount you can put in, whether it be on the Roth side or the traditional side, goes up quite often. That's something else we have to keep up with. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that it takes me a couple of months to memorize the new year because yeah. of what it's gone to and things like that. But again, it's something you got to keep an eye on because you may be missing an opportunity or you could be doing something else. You could be putting too much in. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of people try to do that and we have to back it out because that kind of screws up the whole account. And that can get a little messy too, backing it out, because then you have to account, for, if it was invested into an account, you have to account for whatever gains it may have gotten as well. Yeah. Um, so for 2024, 7,000 is the contribution limit for an individual, an extra 1,000 for those 50 and older as a catch up. So $8,000 if you're age 50 and old, uh, over, excuse me. Uh, something that's, ha that's pretty cool happened in 2025 for taxpayers between the ages of 60 and 63, you are allowed $10,000. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's. Thank you. If you've got it, yeah, we appreciate yeah. that. And, and again, the, the government is some of the things you're doing right. And I love my country. The government sometimes good, sometimes bad, uh, but they're, they are trying to encourage more savings yeah. by expanding the rules and, and more opportunities. And some more things are coming down the pike too. So again, you got to keep up on it. And not to be negative, but I think they're seeing that their spending is um, getting tighter and tighter. Their ability to spend the money necessary for benefits is shrinking. Dried so, up. So, yeah. so I think that maybe that's contributing to loosening up some of the some of our opportunities for contributions there. Yep. Uh, another one, missing RMDs uh, or taking the incorrect amount, whether it's over or under. Right. I can't tell you how often somebody will call us up and say, I'll be 71 and a half this year. I need to start my required minimum distributions. Well, that rule changed. It's changed, changed to 72. Twi it changed twice. In yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it changed to 73 a year later. And yeah. so people are like all over the board. And then they say, is it 59 and a half? Or is it, you know, and there's so many different ages. And I don't understand why whoever writes these bills adds a half in there on some of these. Why, not, why 59 and a half? Why not 60 when you can start taking money out of an IRA? Or 59. Or 59 or 55, whatever, you know. Uh, so, yeah, again, something else to keep up with. And, and folks all the time are calling up saying, I'm 71 and a half or I'm 72. I've got to take that money out of my IRA. I really don't need it. I said, take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. You're okay for a year or whatever it may be. And that could be a sizable amount to have to come out of these IRAs. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, if you're age 73 and you've got half a million dollars, then you're looking at... Um, is that twenty two, twenty five thousand dollars has got to come out on top of any other income and social security and pensions? It could put you again in a higher tax bracket. That's right. That'll be taxed. And 
If you miss your RMD and it's under, then you will be penalized for what you miss. Um, the IRS will help you out, maybe give you a pass if you show that you are trying to fix it. And you didn't um, miss about much. At, right, right. Um, but also, again, as Mark mentioned with tax liability, things like that, if you take more than you need, um, you're just increasing your taxes for that year. Right. Um, so we, we want to think about not only Matt getting those RMDs, but making it as efficient as possible. And by the way, if you need income, you are retired, you need income, if you're 73, you probably are retired, um, RMD can be your income. Mm -hmm. And so we yeah. want to utilize that bucket first. You got to take it anyway. Mm -hmm. Might as well let it be your monthly income. You don't have to take it all at once. And Evan, as you know, you don't have to take it from every IRA you have. You could you, you come up with the amount, you can take it all from one IRA, from two, from four, from whatever. But if we've turned on income, we track that and we know, hey, you've already satisfied your requirement on distribution because of your income coming from this one. You're good. You're done. Right, right. Yep. Neglecting health care costs. That's a tough one. It's a hard one. <laughs> no, it really is. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's getting harder. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, you know, if you're talking about just Medicare, Medicaid, things like that, those premiums are always going up. Medicare Part A, you paid for for the last 40 years. Medicare Part B starts. I think it's 174 per person this year, if I remember correctly. And then you've got the supplements. You know, do you Medicare Advantage? Do you uh, you get your Part D drug? We don't want to get into a Medicare discussion today. But then there's the deductibles. There's the co-pays, uh, things that aren't covered. There's certain drugs that aren't covered. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had a, a retiree. She was paying $2,000 a month for a drug that was keeping her alive. You know what she did? She skipped every other day because she could not afford it. Now, that's been a couple years ago. Maybe some of that's been closed up, maybe not. Uh, and then you get into what else? Long-term care. Mm -hmm. uh, a sitter, assisted living. We've got um, you know clients right now dealing with that. I just was on the phone with one today. And, and they're struggling to figure out not only how can I take care of mom, but now I'm worried about myself. Mm -hmm. I've seen what it cost in time, in stress, but mostly in money. And I think uh, in the Atlanta metropolitan area, the average long-term care nursing home facility is, I think, 110000 now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on the facility and things like that. And so it, it, it needs to have a plan. I'm not saying go out and buy insurance, but you need to have a strategy yeah. for it. Yeah, and the worst thing that we see most of the time in this uh, avenue is one spouse has a big long-term care need they spend down a lot of money because they didn't plan um, efficiently or or at all, um, and then that spouse passes after long-term care through a few years, and then the surviving spouse is left with much smaller assets, and they find themselves in a very difficult situation as they are starting to get into that same stage of life. Again, be proactive, create a strategy, and by the way, that gives me an opportunity to say something. We do have a checklist on our website, which is masterplanretire.com. One checklist is uh, what happens when you lose a loved one. Mm -hmm. I think it's 50 things to do. It might be like, more than that. It actually. might be. Yeah. You know, this is what you do the first two weeks, then the first 30 days, and then you know, whatever. And that's a valuable, uh, let us know if you want a copy of that. It is, uh, if, whether you've got somebody that you've just lost or whether maybe somebody in your family has an illness terminal. Uh, there's also a checklist called elder care. And it's a checklist of the things you need to be thinking about as you age more into your 70s and 80s and beyond to make sure that you don't miss something as well. So masterplanretire.com, um, um, it's a great place to find these. Uh, also, by the way, uh, we'll be talking briefly in a few minutes. Uh, in fact, you may want to mention it now, Evan. Our number is 770-980-9262. Do you want to mention the consultation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's just an opportunity for you to schedule some time with a master plan advisor to discuss your own retirement hopes, dreams, fears, uh, give us some information. We will ru run a series of reports for you, uh, help you get organized, get a good 10,000 foot view of your own retirement, where you stand, what happens if you put the key in and turn the engine on of your retirement today, where do things go? How, how long does your money last? Yeah. Um, and then let's stress test it. Where are your weak points? How do you do in a bear market? What happens if taxes go up? What happens if you lose a loved one, long-term care need, et cetera? Get a, see where your strengths and weaknesses are and know how to fix them. Uh, and, and honestly, um, we do love new clients. That's one of our favorite things, of course, but whether or not you become a new client, those are completely complimentary and um, they are a great opportunity just to learn more about where you stand in your retirement. So definitely uh, take up that opportunity if you feel like you should. And you can actually schedule directly on the website, masterplanretire.com. 
push the schedule a meeting button and we can meet in pretty much any way you want to meet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Within reason. Yeah, uh, all right. So the next section, coming off the healthcare um, discussion, is also just not strategizing for Medicare, even as simply as missing your enrollment period can add penalties um, that will compound for the amount of time that you continue yeah. to miss them. Um, it's really important to speak to a Medicare professional, I think, uh, especially if you are receiving some benefits from another place. What do you need? Where are the holes? Um, it can get yeah. pretty messy. Yeah, one of our um, uh, team members is a Medicare consultant, um, can tell you uh, everything you ever want to know about Medicare, but we're afraid to ask. <laughs> I think that's the title of our book. I'm not sure. But anyway, <laughs> we have a show, by the way, if you want to look back through the library, uh, YouTube, podcast, whatever it may be, uh, and, and pick up on that. But more importantly, if you're either um, working but past 65, what do you do? Do you take Medicare A, B, do you not? Uh, it depends, by the way. Um, if you're turning 65, you know, which direction do you go in? And, and I tell you what, Evan, what I hate is these folks are getting so much mail, mm -hmm. and it can be, first of all, it's proprietary. In other words, they're advertising their product, right? Mm -hmm. Even AARP, I love the company. They're fine. They do great things, but they somebody pays for them to recommend them. Mm -hmm. And so it's not an AARP product. It's a blank insurance company product. And so, you know, having an independent consultant to be able to say, yeah. this is your situation. This is the pills you take. This is where you live. Uh, what are your feelings about A, B, and C? This is how they work, and go from there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so moving to the next section, thinking in net numbers rather than gross. Yeah, we like to use the illustration. Uh, if you want to buy a cup of coffee at Starbucks for six bucks, uh, it's really costing you eight bucks because you're buying it with after-tax money. So you need to think about in retirement especially, what do I need coming into my pocket each month? Mm -hmm. Um, and then we back that up and, and, and start figuring in taxes based on how much income they need. Um, but that's one of the, that's a hard number for folks to come up with. That's why we spend a lot of time talking to them about it because a post-retirement budget could be different than a pre-retirement budget. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've got to look at different numbers, not that you would be spending totally different, but maybe you're not driving to work anymore. Yeah. You, you know, maybe you were having to commute. Maybe you were having to buy work clothes or, or something like that. Maybe, you, you know, whatever. There's so many different things. Maybe you're able to cook at home more now. Or maybe you don't want to cook at home. You're retired. You want to go out to eat. Um, so there's so many things to look at. You're also not contributing to a 401k anymore or a thrift savings plan or anything like that. And, and so we kind of walk through that. And, and a lot of our clients, Evan, as you know, they don't want to take a pay cut. Mm -hmm. What I was bringing home last year while I worked, I want to bring home now in retirement. I didn't work 40 years to take a pay cut. Yeah. And so, and so we, we, we try to make that happen by making their money more, uh, more efficient, tax-wise, growth-wise, income-wise, mm -hmm. so that they have what they need to make it through and uh, to and through retirement uh, without the worry of running out of money. Yeah, and whether it's a cup of coffee on daily spending or something big like a $50,000 truck, you're really paying 60 plus. Um, <laughs> you gotta think in gross numbers. That 401k that you're putting money into for all these years, uh, maybe it's not actually $500,000. How much of that's going to the government? How much are you taking on withdrawals? How much are you actually netting after they withhold taxes on that withdrawal? Or if you don't withhold taxes, how much are you going to be stroking a check at the end of the year? Um, so yeah, we get out of the net mindset and start thinking in uh, gross numbers. Well, um, and, and that brings to the point we've mentioned before. You have a mortgage if you have a traditional IRA, 401k, thrift savings plan. You have a mortgage on that account. Some of that belongs to the government. There's no way to get away from it. I'll have people say, well, what can I do? No. What can I? No. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. You're not going to get around it. You pass away, your kids are going to pay it. So it's going to get paid. So would you rather pay it now when it's a little bit more on sale for taxes or not? But do think about if I've got a $500,000 IRA, I probably have about a $400,000 IRA. Mm -hmm. And so you start thinking about that. You start thinking, well, maybe I want to think more about some Roth conversions and tax strategies. Here's another one. Avoiding the stock market. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, so uh, being a veteran and, and having worked, not a veteran of the military, but a veteran of the financial services industry, uh, I've been around through a lot of bear, uh, bear markets. Mm -hmm. And so 2008, over an 18-month period, the market lost 56%, right? And so I still know people. I still come across clients yep, that so still have money in cash. Uh, I've got $400,000 in a checking account. Uh, why are you saving up for something? 
uh, you know, when the market did that 2008 thing or that 2018 thing or that 2020 thing or that 2020 thing. Well, I've been earning 2%. <laughs> really? That's pretty good, actually, for a checking account. And, and so The money market. The, the first mistake they made was getting out after the market dropped, locked in their losses. And then a lot of people made the mistake of not getting back in. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm scared. Well, you've lost money over the last however many years because you're not making the kind of money to keep up with inflation. I think that's a great one. And in those big drops... Uh, just kind of in that same line of thought, when you do have one of those big drops, fighting every urge in you to sell everything out to cash as well, that's very important. That, that's, that's called bad investor Stay behavior. Stay the course. Which we've talked about before. So And so uh, along the lines of investing unwisely, also um, your risk tolerance in retirement is cha has changed since your, um, your earning years, investing too aggressively or investing too conservatively. Yeah, and, and it's not only changed from a standpoint of how aggressive or conservative you need to be, but your money has to have a different job set. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer about growth, growth, growth. Now, now it's about creating some short-term income, some longer-term income, some conservative growth, maybe some moderate growth, some tax-free growth, some tax-free income. And so you may have six, eight, ten jobs for your money in retirement. It's Again, it's not your, it's not your daddy's retirement anymore. Mm -hmm. When, uh, you know, between 80 and the year 2000, we averaged 17%. Last 23 years, we've averaged six. And so it's just a different world. We've got to make your money more efficient. Right. Um, let's see. We only have a few minutes left. What's a fun one? Oh, here's a good one. Uh, here's a mistake. Uh, putting your kids first. Yeah, you know, that's that's tough. I know as a parent, I mean, it's, it's tough to say, you know, hey, Johnny needs a place to live. Peggy needs a car. And, yeah, I'll pay for that $100,000 wedding. And then I'm going to put them all through college so they'll be debt free. And then you step into retirement, all your kids are in good shape, except one still lives at home, which is okay, by the way. Um, but, but you have no money, mm -hmm. you know, and so are they going to take care of you? You know, now, there could be a balance, and it depends on how much your assets are. And yeah, uh, I, want, I want to put some money in my, my, my grandkids' college fund. I'd love to be able to help with that as well. But you've got to also know where you stand and do you have enough to retire before you start giving it away. And then at age 75, saying, uh, honey, daughter, love of my life, child, can you give me some money or let me live in your basement or whatever? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that's a great one. Yeah. Uh, we got two minutes left. So this, I think we'll move on to the last one, which is basically having no plan. Oh, best one of all, right? Best one so, of all. So yeah, so many uh, financial advisors and brokers and insurance salespeople are there to sell your product. So the first thing they do when you walk into their office is, I need to see your statements. Okay, so we're going to buy this and sell that and do this and do that. That's like building a house without a blueprint, as you know. And so we want to build the roadmap. So our first four to five meetings about is about building your individual retirement roadmap, your blueprint. Then we start plugging in what works. It makes sense, but so much of the industry doesn't do it. I don't understand. I don't get it. And I don't see how anybody can have a comfort feeling doing that, walking into an office doing that. But it's happening all the play, all over the place. Yeah. Uh, we've already seen from this episode of the last, there are so many moving pieces. Each one affects the other. There are so many gotchas or, or potential pitfalls or whatever you want to refer mm -hmm. to them to. And again, they're always changing. Um, you find a personal CFO. Why, why would you go it on your own? I really don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying we're the perfect fit for you, but but get help somewhere. Make sure they're a fiduciary and make sure they build a plan first That's right. um, and, and, and then keep up with the plan. You know, don't. Don't let them build a plan or sell you something. You never see them again. So, yeah, it's very important that you that you get that. And, and a good place to start, again, is contacting us. We'll run those reports for you. Let's see where you're at. We'll give you an idea of kind of how we work and the agenda and what the what the plan looks like. And then you've got a better idea of, is this, is this a good choice? Do I need to be proactive? Absolutely. And, you know, you can find that uh, button for the complimentary consultation on our website, masterplanretire.com. Again, uh, you can schedule your complimentary consultation there, or you can look for uh, retirement resources, uh, multiple episodes like this one today. You can find checklists that Mark mentioned mentioned earlier, retirement checklists on what you need to make sure you accomplish before you retire, what happens if you lose a loved one, things like that. Um, without any further ado, Mark, I think you can close us out, sir. No, uh, thank you for joining us. Until we see each other again, we remember, plan well and prosper. Take care. 
This was Retirement Roadmap Radio with Mark Fricks of Master Plan Retirement Consultants. To schedule a complimentary consultation, go to masterplanretire.com or call 770-980-9262. Thanks for listening and remember, plan well and prosper. All matters discussed during the show are for informational purposes only. Each individual situation may vary and the opinions expressed here may not apply to everyone. Materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources and no representations can be made as to its accuracy. All ideas and information should be discussed in detail with one of our qualified representatives prior to implementation. Advisory services offered through Master Plan Retirement Consultants, a registered investment advisor in the state of Georgia. Mark Fricks and Master Plan Retirement Consultants are not affiliated with or endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency.